example scene two. So now that we've laid out all the real fundamentals of how we do this kind of thing, um, I've got a couple of specific other ways I've tried and used uh, different approaches. So this example we're looking at now, uh, I used a particular approach to get to where we, we're at. Um, so as you'll see here, uh, you can see the way it's moving through the environment. It's difficult to see because we're so wide. Uh, but you, if you if you squint or you zoom in, you can see the, the cameras and the objects moving around there in space. Um, so the way I block this one out is a little different to last time. I actually use a 3D object to block out the path of the creature, at least. The other guy wasn't. He was done the way we've, we've done so far. But I used a 3D guy, as you can see there, to animate him going across the... Uh, the organic environment. Um, the reason I've done this, well, a number of reasons. The first is that sometimes it's really difficult, even with the best intentions and the technique we used previously, still can be quite difficult to know exactly where you are in 3D space when you're working through the camera. So having a 3D object within that 3D space for you to kind of anchor to, and as even as just as a visual reference, um, is really useful because it really, um, allows you to see exactly where you are in the space. But further to that, we can literally anchor to it as well. So in this example, I've actually used, uh, I've created a grease pencil layer and I've anchored it to the object in a process called parenting. So if you hold, if you select the uh, grease pencil object, hold shift and select the actual man who is already animated and then press control and P, um, the option to parent it will come up. And then you, you choose parenting. I always choose parenting with transform. And then that grease pencil layer will stick to the, um, the 3D man and wherever he goes, it goes. So now you don't have to worry about animating the grease pencil layer as an object right now. You've just parented it to an already animated 3D object. So in this sample, I've already done my kind of uber rough uh, grease pencil animations of the, guy, of the, uh, the creature. So now I've just hidden the the man, the 3D man. His geometry is all still there and we're still following his coordinates and everything. We're just not looking at him anymore. Another reason for using a 3D object like this is that you might be able to hand this information on then to another department or another department who uses a different piece of software because the grease pencil object may or may not translate. So you could you get savings handing over to layout then. So I'll just run through some the usual process video here now of it. Um, nothing unique to add to this one really other than the fact that it's tethered to a 3D object. The process of roughing, cleaning and filling was identical to the example that I've given already. Um, uh, we got a much more complicated environment and I've used the EV renderer which I'll switch on. And you can see the lights kick in there for a bit of atmosphere, a bit of volumetric shading. I've added a bit of a rim light to the, to the creature there. You can do that manually in the grease pencil layer, or there's actually an effects tab where you can add a couple of different effects like glow and one of them is rim light. So that's what I'm doing right now over on the right there. You can uh, kind of push a sort of fake rim light left or right, you can change the color of it. And then you can also add modifiers like hue, saturation, tint, to just play with the coloration. Um, in the new version of Blender, um, real-time lights in the 3D environment now affect grease pencil so that's something I'm going to explore in the future, but it's not something that's uh, actually active in the scene. Everything here is done via the uh, uh, the modifiers. So now we're focusing uh, the viewport over in real time with EV. So you see all the lights and reflections and everything. On the, uh, the little dude over here who's uh, sliding down and then kind of jumps up over the ledge. Again, this was done in exactly the same way as the demo I did earlier. Um, by doing a just a rough drawing and then pathing it, animating the object and then drawing the uh, the animation. So the rough layer is done there. Let me switch to the cleanup, kind of skip past all that, back into EV mode. So um, the grease pencil modifiers and effects, the effects at least, only show up in in EV. So if you want the rim lighting, you're gonna have to use the EV renderer. So you can see here I am again now playing with the rim light. You can see how far you can push that. It basically just kind of creates a mask or like a duplicate of the silhouette and then makes it a different color. It's, it's, it's a cheat, but it, it's pretty effective. Change the color of it. Um, and again, then you can add other modifiers like hue, saturation, 
play with those just to get the color balance you want. But uh, as I said, this uh, this new new system of lighting within Blender now is really exciting. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to playing with that. And so here are the final renders of this sequence. These two shots.